Welcome back to Ghost Recon Breakpoint. In this video, we are going through everything gear and guns. It's going to be a full guide so that you understand how everything works on this game. And we'll start by saying that every single piece of gear, every single gun you can get in the game, they all have the same rarities. It goes standard, which is your like white drop. Then you've got improved, which is green, advanced, which is blue, high end, which is purple, and elite, which is yellow. I say yellow because gold is signature, which would pretty much work like an exotic does in other games. Signature weapons are the only thing available at the moment. As far as I'm aware, there are no signature gear pieces. Currently, there is no way to actually craft new pieces of gear. You need to find it all. Looking in my inventory, you'll see, because I dismantle pretty much everything, advanced gear parts, then we have like standard, high end, elite, and then somewhere else down here we've got improved. There's no use in the game for them at the moment. I don't know if there ever was a use, I don't know if there'll be one implemented, but at the moment them gear parts are useless and every single gear piece you get you have to find. Guns can be upgraded from Mark 1 all the way up to Mark 3 after you unlock the skill to do so. From one of your four classes you go up to the basics. You need to unlock two of the skills from each of the little branches to unlock the ones around it, so two from basics. You move along two from weapons, that's four skill points altogether. Then unlocking the Mark II weapons, that's going to cost you two skill points, so that's six altogether. Then getting the ability to upgrade to Mark III will cost you four skill points. Altogether it's going to cost you ten once you've selected your first class. But after that you will have the ability to go to a Mark III weapon. You are going to need a fair amount of different materials in order to upgrade your weapons. You might need some metal parts, some class specific parts like assault rifle weapon parts. And you'll also need some different tiered parts, so like elite, advanced. Upgrading a gun does it across the board. By upgrading my HTI, which we're about to do so I can show you how it all works. By upgrading that to Mark III, if I was to dismantle this green and ever find an elite or other rarity, it will automatically be Mark III. And that's the case for any gun, so upgrading a gun only happens once. When you've got it to Mark III, it's permanent across any of the other guns of that type that you find. So if we go to the gunsmith, each different class of gun will have different passive bonuses, which you unlock as you progress through the marks. So Mark 1 on a sniper is 9% damage to drones. To upgrade this, we need improved weapon parts, so I can upgrade that. Advanced weapon parts, metal parts, standard weapon parts, metal parts again. And again, sniper parts there, standard weapon parts. That automatically puts it to Mark 2. Now I've been given 10 reload speed, which is applied after I get a kill. Improved weapon parts... Metal parts, and again, high-end weapon parts that time. Sniper parts, advanced weapon parts, same again, and then improved. Now it's gone to Mark III, but it's not maxed out. The final passive bonus is 20 mobility. Now we need high-end weapon parts, elite weapon parts, and you can see they increase uh, damage and reload speed. Metal parts again. Sniper parts down here, high-end weapon parts, advanced, and metal. So now that's a maxed out, max level reached Mark III weapon. You'll see next to where it says Mark III will be applied on all HTI. So every single HTI I get from now on will be a Mark III. Standard loot, in order to get your standard weapon parts, it will stop dropping when you reach a certain point of the game. Once you're getting purples and yellows, you won't get anything lower than a blue piece of loot to drop off an enemy. And the shop is only going to sell as low as the green rarity. At that point, for the Mark 1 upgrades, you'll only get the standard weapon parts to drop from drones and convoys. You can use the Murmur drone patrols if I show you these on the map. By coming down to Egg Island, you can see there's a Murmur patrol area there. Also, you have the... I'm going to say Armon, Assault Area. They are the vehicle type drones. They're a little bit harder to take down just because they're a lot stronger. But those enemy drones, as well as the working ones that you can find down the docks, the ones that fly overhead sometimes, they can all drop standard weapon parts, but it's based on luck. It's not a guarantee to get them. And with the convoys, just look for the ones that have the circle gear icon, not the gun. 
On your mini map, you'll see it flickering through vehicle to gun or vehicle to circle like gear icon. Take that down and the easiest way to do that is to shoot the tires because they don't stop for anything. So in, like, if you can't get to an area where you can pop the driver, then get rid of one of the tires and the truck will automatically pull over. The driver will get out. Then you can wipe out the enemies, take the gear out the back. And again, you have a chance of getting some standard weapon parts. If you're a low gear score or you've got some standard weapons that you've kept, try equipping them to keep your gear score low and see if it drops standard loot because you can take advantage of that and save yourself having to farm drones over and over again. Although I'm not 100% sure if it works like that, but it was a suggestion by someone in the comments, so I thought I would add it in just in case it helps some of you out. What you see on the right hand side of the screen, that is the five gear types in the game. Hats, gloves, chests, trousers, and boots. There are seven different gun types in the game. If we go to the objectives board, you have assault rifles, handguns, LMGs, shotguns, SMGs, snipers, and DMRs. Blueprints, these are all the blueprints I have unlocked. These three at the top are still locked because I need to go and find them. They can be found by discovering enemy bases. It's going to pop up as a blue circle letting you know there's a blueprint there. Or you can pin them from the weapons menu on the objectives board. So the screen we're in now, I could pin that if I wanted to. If we go to the TAC map and we have a look around, there's a blue one here. So that's the P45T handgun. Then we have over here the M1911. Further down here we have the 6P41. And then if you've got a base, you can hover over it. And it's going to show you the loot that you can find in that specific base. And if there's a blueprint there, it will tell you that it's there. Like that area there, literally just northwest of Diamond Lake, you can find the blueprint for the VHSD2, which is an amazing assault rifle. Attachments for weapons can also be found at enemy bases or some you can actually buy in the shop. If we access the shop quickly, I'm hoping it doesn't take forever to load. Okay, we're in. Sometimes it just sits there and is loading for like a minute or something before it allows me to browse through the shop. These are the attachments you can buy. Not every single attachment's here, but you can see things like the underbarrel grenade launcher. You can get assault rifle extended mags. There's a few decent attachments you can get. And once you obtain a weapon blueprint, it's going to come to Maria's shop, which can be found in Erewhon or accessed from a bivouac. You can pay scale credits in order to craft the gun. They are going to craft at a gear score that's close to your current. So you can see all of these pretty much are going to craft in between 215 and 217. They will also come with a random rarity, depending on which end of the gear score scale the gun crafted at. I don't know what it would be like for me now, but around 115, maybe up to 140, there was like a six gear score difference or maybe an eight gear score difference in the weapons when I was crafting them. They will also roll with different perks. So if you get a blue, it might come with like 20% XP bonus or something like that. If you're lucky enough to get an elite, it could come with 25 meters automatic marking. The rocket launcher on this game is actually classed as a skill so you will need to unlock it to use it. It's not going to take too many skill points. I think it's going to cost... After you've unlocked your class, you'll need to unlock two basics. Over to the right-hand side, you can get the rocket launcher. Don't worry about crafting the rockets. It's fairly expensive for resources to craft. If you're running low on rockets, head to the shop. And remember, you can do that either from visiting everyone or from any bivouac in the game. And you want to go through to the consumables. You'll see their rocket launcher... You can just buy them. They're 100 scale credits each. They're not expensive at all. Melee weapons or knives, which is actually the penultimate thing I want to talk about in this video. They can be purchased in the shop and they can also be unlocked. If we quickly go and have a look at the battle rewards. I've just recently unlocked the nice one. At tier 8, you get the Serrated Edge, which is the Wolves variant of it. They don't do any extra damage or anything like that. They're still classed as a weapon. They're actually CQC weapons, so close quarters combat. The thing I like the best about these is the fact that I'm not sure if it's every single one, but at least some of the knives in this game actually have their own unique animations, and I think that's pretty cool. Perks will roll on weapons and gear on the game. You will see your first on a green drop, so if we hover over the HTI, you can see that's a minus 10% technique cooldown. When you go from blue all the way up to yellow, so the elite weapons, 
or the gear, you will have two perks for each one and their percentages increase the better the rarity. As an example, we have my blue pistol, which gives me 20% XP bonus and minus 10% technique cooldown. Then over here on the gear, you've got like the purple stuff, 5% stamina. Then over here, you've got 6 stealth. And then down here, you've got 6 stealth again with 4% health regen speed. Then over on the elites, you will get things like 30 mobility and 25 meters automatic marking. I can't remember exactly how much it is on a purple. I think it's a 15 meter automatic marking. So the elite weapons and the gear actually have better benefits. As you'll see, they're 8% health regen speed and 10% stamina on an elite piece of gear. The very last thing is actually tied to the stats. The signature weapons on this game, which you can obtain by taking down bosses, and there are also, I think it's tier 3 in the battle rewards. Yeah, you'll unlock the G28 Scout Wolves. That is classed as a signature weapon. So it'll be like a yellow or a gold colour and it'll have a star next to it. These have their own unique perks. As an example, there is an M93 sniper that you can unlock. That sniper is so powerful, its unique perk is actually to ignore enemy armour. There's a lot of crazy things going on in this game with the gear and the guns. I'm hoping we eventually get a way to craft new pieces of gear. Because it's useless having the parts if there's nothing we can do with them. But that's going to do it for the video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it helped you out. Thank you for watching.